So in VIP, hello everyone. Who would like to hot seat and come up and share a little bit about their story? If you wanna put your hand up, we can hot spot someone. Thank you, Tony. And then we'll pop over to Manicia here. Tony, let's go ahead and unmute and we'll bring you up here. Hello, Tony. Hello, Hello. Hey, guys. Howdy, Thank howdy. you very much for helping us. I want Thank everybody to know here. that I used to be a fashion model. I'm 65 years old now. I've been doing yoga and I've been doing jumping on the trampoline every day for 10 minutes. And um, I have a Pilates machine and I do everything at home. I do my juicing like cucumbers, celery, ginger, lemon, lime, a uh, fourth of sauerkraut. And man, when I do that in the morning, oh, my hand raises to thank the source and my other foot gets up like I'm being kissed. And I'm like my heart, my hand on my heart. Thank you so much. It tastes so good. It feels so good. So I'm learning through all the years to eat food that loves me, that I love them. And it, I'm one of the sugar addicts. Yep, I lived on cookies in the gym for 20 years um, and realized that it was killing my body. And yeah, I looked hot, I looked great, but you know what? I was miserable. I won competition in bodybuilding. I won competition in modeling in New York. You know, I've done a lot. I have three children uh, grown, but um, for me, I do my breath of life. I do my meditation. I'm uh, religiously hooked on taking good care of me. I'm single alone. I prefer to be alone. I love being who I am and what I'm doing. And um, I make up for everything I didn't have as a child, which is uh, my art and writing. So um, you do your trampoline, you do your um, Pilates today I did on arms. Yesterday I was doing it on legs. And then the day before I was doing yoga. So I don't need to kill myself to get performance. I had implants put in 20 years ago. I had them taken out two years ago. I could not lift my arms over my head for over a year. I could not lift weights and my little weights and my Pilates machine, you could see right here. This is my trampoline and I couldn't do anything. I gained a lot of weight. I was very depressed. Uh, I went probably from 160 pounds to maybe 185, 90. And that's big for me. I'm five, nine and a half. Um, so it's, I've been weaning myself slowly into the right direction. I've been sitting down and resting when I need to, cause I can't do all that and taking walks when I need to, because that's all I could do. Um, so, you know, as you age is the reason why I'm telling you all this you know, all of a sudden, 10 years go by and you go, wow, I can't still get this five pounds off. Well, it's not always about the food that you're eating. It's about how you're not nurturing yourself. And I've learned that after I had surgery, I needed to sit down more and rest because my body was so used to working out six days a week for so many years that if I didn't work out, I felt guilty. And I'd say I couldn't eat if I didn't work out. So we all have our own issues. We all have our own brain thinking, but thank you both very much for letting me do this. I don't know if I do it every time at this time of night, because I've already done all my workout. I'm ready for bed in about two hours, you know? So anyway, enough of me. Thank you. I love you know, Tom, what I love, what yeah. I love, what I love about what Tony just said is <clears throat> you brought up something that is so imperative is um, it's as we know, I, I go by science with, you know, with, the art of working out. And when I train clients, I don't go by anything but science. And it is a scientific fact that if you do not more, they, they did a test, a study at UCLA. They had a group of people that worked out consistently for five to six days versus a group of people that worked out two days and rested for the other, other five days. And they saw within 90 days that group B who took a rest actually lost more weight and actually was able to maintain it because 
Yep. Overworking out is something that is so common because you get your endorphins start running, you get excited. It starts, it's a natural effect that happens. So learning how to, like Tony said, respect your body, learning how to know when to say, this is enough for me. It's right. huge because within 45 minutes, if you're working out longer than 45 minutes, and I'm talking about people that work out consistently like myself and that are fit, you are actually not building muscle because your muscles can only tear for so long. They need to repair. Your body needs to rest. Your body is asking you for that. So learning that balance and knowing that and not creating, that's why I think this is important for this group to be created and talk about that is knowing when to stop, knowing how much to do, supporting each other. I can't get to everybody. Leonard can't get to everybody. But hey, you guys have new friends and a new way to talk to each other, to come up with ideas. How do you rest? What does your self-care look like? We don't talk about self-care in, on Instagram. Like, praise Jesus that somebody got up and said, hey, I took a bath today and I took care of myself and I read a book. No, it always has to be go, 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 make more, 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 which causes, like Tony says, massive collapses that can cause massive medical issues in the long run. So take Tony's story, take my story, take what we learned the hard way and really input that in your lifestyle that you're building. It's so imperative, you guys. It's so imperative. Thank you. Tony, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, Tony, yeah. that was great. That was great. Manisa, are you ready? You had your hand up, is that right? Uh, yes, I did. Awesome. Hey, hey. I can't see your pretty face, hey. Manisha. <laughs> yeah, girl. Okay, let me move. There you there go. There you are. Woohoo! Look okay, at that. So <laughs> hey, thank you so much um, for doing this. Um, as far as like me, like I um, used to work out like a couple of years ago. Um, I'm a little bit on the other side of the spectrum. Like I have a hard time like gaining weight. Um, and like when I was in college, like for some reason, I don't know, I was just really happy. I don't know if it was my environment, um, me being away from home, but it was much easier to like gain weight. And, but I found myself like years later, um, moving back home, it's been so hard to gain weight again. Um, like just working nine to five and just like, like Ashley said, being on the go, go, go and not making time to like nurture my body. Um, and that's a struggle that I'm still like working through and trying to figure out. Um, I know that I'm not like as severely underweight as I used to be, but um, it's, still, it's still definitely an issue that I'm get to work on. And so I think really what, thank you for that, Manicia. Thank you being so being so vulnerable and sharing that because I think that a lot of people, as they filter in in the next few weeks, they're going to really relate to you. And um, I know Leonard and I have had massive talks. I had to slow Leonard down. Leonard, I said to Leonard, you close this deal, that deal. If you're not here, what's the point? If you are not nourishing your body, not nourishing your body can cause massive effects heart problems, kidney failure, your bones will start to deteriorate. It's like an older, older person who cannot, cannot function anymore. A lot of it comes from your gut health. You need to ramp up your gut health. There's a lot of different things that we could do to fix that. You need to get meal prepping. There's a lot of mechanics, but the underlining thing is you don't feel something. Something happened in, in your past whether it was if you, we go back and we say, how was your childhood dinner? What did it look like? What, what was that like? That usually mirrors how you eat in your life. That usually mirrors how you treat your body. You know, I know that when I was overweight, I was always being fed because they felt bad for me because they didn't know what to do. So I overate. So now I learn how to eat I, I, I eat for my body. I don't let my body, like, I don't eat because like, you know, it's something I got to do to fill something inside of me. And that's for underweight or overweight people. And there's a lot of different things that you can do 
to really stop. I mean, like in self-care, it's a hundred percent self-care. And we in the United States of America, we don't do self-care and look at what happens, you know? So really looking at, and you know, we could talk about it later, like really looking at, we could go back into time and figure out what did your dinners look like? Did you have dinners with your family? You know, I know with Leonard, we talked about that and he loves to be around people. He'll eat if he's around people, right? Mm -hmm. We found that out. But, you know, he has, a, you know, he's alone when he does his work. So that's the majority of the time he wasn't eating. So we had to go in there and find out, well, like, why don't you deserve to eat and nourish your body? Like, because you have to jump on another call. Okay, eat while you're on the call. Or tell them, hey, I'm going to take a 15-minute break and eat. You cannot perform, workout or no workout, in life if you are not eating food. Talking about being underweight. So it, it brings me to a very specific memory of filling out the form at DMV when you go get your ID, right? Mm -hmm. And most people, they weigh X and they take a few pounds off because they don't want to put that on their ID, okay? I was putting pounds on because I didn't want to have that on my ID. So I'm 5'10", 5'11 with shoes, but 5'10", and I would consistently say I weighed 150 pounds. And then I would say I weighed 140. When, if I look back during the pandemic, there was a time where I was 119 pounds. But you could not tell that from the outside. So it was at the time when I went into the teen digits that I was like, there's an issue. And so I told myself that I was worthy of eating. And I had to look at bringing this full circle back to our theme of worthiness, which is today's theme, is why was I not worthy of eating? I felt that if I didn't close a client that day, if I didn't close a proposal, if I didn't get hours billed, if I didn't X, Y, Z, then I was going to work until that happened. And so I had this unhealthy relationship with food. And to some degree, it's an everyday battle, right? I still have that. It's a tendency that I go back to. It's this unhealthy relationship with food as a reward. And, you know, where that comes from or where that stems from is probably very uh, scattered, right? But I know that specifically one of those big factors is performance and work as relating to the ability to eat. And then tapped onto that kind of like icing on a cake is never eat alone, right? Like you should never eat alone. Was that like narrative and that story in my head and the whisper in, my, in the back of my ear of like never eat alone. So like Ashley was mentioning, if I'm around people, if we're at a party, I'll eat, that's not a problem. Like eat, happy, be merry, great. But if I'm eating alone at home, I don't wanna cook by myself, right? That comes from my childhood. We don't like cooking in this house, right? Cooking is not good. We always have to go out to eat. And then I'm like, I don't wanna go out to eat. That's to do. And when I finish work, usually places aren't open, right? So it's like this cycle, this culture that I've built within my own head of this bad relationship with food. So I can definitely relate to you when you talk about being underweight and being conscious of that and working better towards that. What, what other feelings come up that you're dealing with now as it relates to being underweight? Is there things that you're tackling now or is that kind of something that you had dealt with in the past? Um, well, now, cause I'm realizing that like my voice and like somehow my voice is connected with me eating. I've been realizing that like I don't use my voice and I internalize things a lot. So I guess I try to like punish myself by not eating, by like internalizing like hurt and pain instead of just like taking care of it and, and nourishing that pain. And the best way to break those patterns, Minicia, the number, the one thing I would suggest you do this week everybody does because this applies to everybody is to identify where it comes from and break the pattern by starting a schedule that you follow that's where you get the most success so on Sundays I dedicate four hours to meal prep everyone in this room has a job 
has a child, has grandchildren, whatever you have going on. We're busy people. So stop the chaos and meal prep. Meal prep for four hours. So that way you have on the go, easy things. It will avoid you having to stop in the middle of doing this. And it will force you to have the food ready to go to eat. I keep a hot pack and a cold pack in my trunk from Walmart. And I am like the mom that everybody knows has food, right? Like, and everywhere I go, this is how I lost my weight. And this is how you can gain your weight. Instead of stopping and getting something that's processed or unhealthy, you're having to force it. You get to go to your trunk, to your meal prep box and bingo, there's your trail mix. There's your cheese. There's your chicken and rice. There's your sweet potatoes, everything that you've prepped. And, and you know, you have to eat because you spent money on it too. And you deserve to eat it and you deserve to feel that way. So deal with the feelings, the patterns, figure out what it is and change it instantly. Force yourself every Sunday. I spent four, three, four hours. I promise you, you spend more time you know, watching Instagram, or maybe you watch your favorite show or whatever, I promise you, do it while you're doing that. Put on your favorite show, start meal prepping, start making it a ritual, a new ritual that you never had as a child or you never had in your home and something that will build health in a way that will provide nourishment to your body and you'll start to see a change in it. And that's what we did for Leonard is we, we made a plan for him. We made it fun. We've made it healthy. And we, you know, you guys can go to Pinterest. They have so many different meals. If you don't know what to cook, you know, put healthy whole food meals into Pinterest. I promise you, but start that. Just start small. Just start with the meal prepping. It will force you and you deserve to have it and tell yourself that I deserve to nourish my body because without that, you're, you're just, you're not having any, any self-care for yourself. So you can't, you can't be performing at a high, at a high level in, intellectually as well, to be honest with you, it, it regulates I thought, everything. I thought that four hours was a lot of time and it actually <laughs> took me less than four hours. And when I think about how much time I would spend thinking about food or going to get food or freaking mm -hmm. out about not having food and wanting food that's way less than the three hours and 20 minutes, three hours and 40 minutes that it actually took me to do it. And it wasn't that block of time where I was cooking the entire time. It was get something going, put a load of laundry in, get something going, clean the bathroom, right? Because we can stagger things, right? But it's a focused time where we've, we've put that on our to-do list. So bringing this home and landing our plane because life is now, we are going to be doing more of these. So I look forward to seeing those of you here in the future. And I wanna leave you with the idea that building your family, building a relationship if you want one, building your health, building your fitness, et cetera, starts with you. And it starts with the intention. And it starts with feeling worthy of having that goal that you set for yourselves. Just like how I didn't feel like I was worthy of having a company where I was the CEO. And now I would never have it any other way because I have the ability to pivot. Ashley and her movement and her company. Ashley's completely transformed her company in the past six months. And she's done that because she has been, and you see, I'm gonna let you go down. Thanks, girl. She has specifically been able to do that because she is in the driver's seat. She might have a co-pilot if she chooses, right? Or she might have a full cabin of people who are giving her advice, but she is in the driver's seat. And at the end of the day, we are the only ones in the driver's seat for our own lives. Isn't that true, Ashley? That's true. And I think to <clears> hone <throat> in to end this is that your worth comes from your self-care as well. If you're not taking care of yourself, you cannot be a present mother. You cannot be a present sister. You cannot be a present uh, friend. You can't be present to your job, to what you need to do. And having faith that you deserve to be worthy of taking care of your body from the inside out is so imperative. It's so imperative. It only takes every day for you to get up. If you need a small step, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. 
then build it. Do not let the, do not let the things in your heads and the nerds and the rackets tell you that you're not worth it because you are. Stop going to compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself and know that you're worth it in every single thing you do. I believe in all you guys. I'm so excited for your journey in your businesses and your health and fitness. Uh, I really, I really just, I really just want each and every one of you to know how worthy you are. You're worthy of this journey. Take it head on and don't let anything else get in your way ever. Worthiness I is another term for self-love. Yes. So the homework, should you choose to do the homework, should you choose to accept it, your homework is to spend five minutes at a minimum doing something that is loving yourself. It could be a bath, it could be breathing, it could be meditation, it could be a walk. But if you're there breathing, stay in the mindset or attempt to stay in the mindset. Tell your, like, talk to yourself. Just like everyone's talking to you in the world, you walk down the street, you feel the opinions, you go on social, you feel the opinions. Take five minutes with yourself at a minimum and talk to yourself the positive thoughts. I'm great because, I'm sexy because, I'm great because, I'm worthy because, I'm lovable because, I get to X, Y, Z. Put it everywhere. Put it in front of your mirrors. Put it in front of your door. Put it in your car. Put it everywhere you possibly can where you can tangibly see it every single day. Because when you see it, you believe it. Thank you everyone for being here. We will see you on the next Matt Sweat session and we'll hop in your inbox. So look forward to seeing us there. See you Bye. soon. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.